The more we know about space, the more we get convinced that Earth is perfect. A strong magnetic field, a dense oxygen-rich atmosphere, and plenty of water can rarely be found anywhere else. However, many accidental and random events happened on Earth that made it such a comfortable place for humans. Let's take an example of the axis tilt and the fact that the Earth is tilted by 23 degrees. If the figure were just like in the case of Jupiter, there would be much less suitable land for agriculture on our planet, because the amount of heat received from the Sun would be constant. This would turn the equator into a hot hell. The poles would become even more frosty deserts, and the warm and cold air masses would be in a static state. In other words, there would not be seasons, temperature fluctuations, and no jumping humidity indicators, resulting in much fewer crops. And that's just one of the factors. Also, atmospheric pressure, forests, sea currents, and many other crucial factors are necessary for life on Earth. One may be tempted to claim that the Earth is the most habitable planet in space, and no better one can be found. But what if there is a better one? Mathematics, physics, and astronomy are ruthless sciences, only because all three claim that there may exist planets in space that is better suited for life than Earth. Rene Heller and John Armstrong even introduced the super-inhabited planet concept in 2014. According to their definition, it is a planet or satellite whose characteristics allow it to support more diverse flora and fauna than Earth. But how is this possible? First, we should consider not only a planet, but a star. The Sun is a typical G-class main-sequence yellow dwarf. We are very grateful to our star for the comfortable living conditions. Still, stars of this type are far from being the best for life. This title is carried by K-class stars, the perfect nannies and caring luminaries for their planets. They're usually cooler than the Sun. However, the temperature doesn't matter much because it's theoretically possible to live even around a tiny brown dwarf. A star's temperature only determines the radius of its habitable zone, and the twists that make a star perfect are activity and lifespan. Our Sun is a kind of compromise between huge and small, as well as hot and cold stars. Yet G-class stars are not the golden middle because they don't live that long. The Sun is already 4 billion years old, and it's gradually increasing in brightness. Approximately within a billion years or so, it will turn into a red giant and is guaranteed to destroy life on Earth. Mars may return to a fully habitable zone with liquid water, but even in an ideal scenario, its days will be numbered quickly because of the star expansion. In the dry state, we have about 5 to 6 billion years that a star like the Sun provides for life. At first glance, that may seem a lot. But don't forget that it took evolution three and a half billion years for a single-celled bacteria to evolve into humans. And the Sun will have killed that human being in a billion years. This is where K-class stars come into the picture. They're more peaceful and live about 40 or even 70 billion years. Consequently, the hypothetical life of such stars would have much more time to develop without global cataclysms. By the way, this is another disadvantage of G-class stars. Our Sun is quite unstable, so the Earth is plagued by ice ages and global warming. Just a few tens of thousands of years ago, glaciers reached central Germany. It's not hard to guess that this hinders the diversity of life. Life orbiting a K-class star will be better insured against the star's vicissitudes. In addition, it will be able to evolve for tens of billions of years, reaching incredible heights. Moreover, there are many more of them in the universe. While stars like our Sun make up 6% of the total number in the Milky Way, K-class stars make up 13%. Therefore, they have a higher chance of producing life. Let's move on and discuss sizes, which matter in planetary science. If our Earth was 10 times bigger, the pressure created by the liquid mantle would increase many times. Most likely, the iron in the core would have solidified. Along with that, the magnetic field would evaporate and instead of auroras, we would see the people's faces dying of radiation. To this would be added constant bombardment by asteroids, which the fat planet would lure in batches. There would also be volcanic activity, because more mantle means more of it trying to break through to the surface. Exact models are challenging to build, but scientists agree that life on such an Earth is likely but not very diverse. After all, there is still gravity, 
which would make us all ten times heavier and many other life-threatening factors. The same can be said of a small Earth. There is no need to dig far for problems here. Less gravity means less force holding the atmosphere together. However, there's still a problem with that, even with our current size. In 2009, NASA calculated the rate at which Venus, Mars, and Earth lost their atmospheres. Surprisingly, the Earth was losing it the fastest. Specifically, about 90 tons of substance are lost daily. Comparison with Mars is not particularly correct because it is smaller and lost most of it long ago. But the fact itself is clear. If the Earth is magically reduced, the atmosphere will quickly be swept away and life will disappear. Still, there is a golden middle between the two extremes. A planet that is one and a half to two times heavier than Earth also has some advantages. First, it has twice stronger gravity, which would make the atmosphere denser. This will automatically reduce the amount of solar radiation and lead to some nice side effects like erosion and relief flattening. The depths of the oceans will decrease, and the diversity of marine fauna will increase since it's easier to live in shallow water. Tectonic activity will slightly increase, but huge spaces for resettlement will level this out. Now the people in the curls have nowhere to go from their volcanoes. On a giant planet with shallow oceans, there would be enough land for everyone and suitable dry land for life. After all, a dense atmosphere would raise the temperature on such a planet by 5 degrees. Together with more oxygen for life, it all looks like heaven. However, it would have to adapt to gravity and the trees are unlikely to be as tall. Still, scientists believe the advantages of planets slightly larger than Earth outweigh their disadvantages. What else would make a hypothetical exoplanet better than Earth? The answer is more continents. When there was only one Pangaea on Earth 300 million years ago, its center was a sparsely populated desert. The farther away from the ocean, the drier the climate. The same story was repeated with the other supercontinents. Even now, the centers of Eurasia with the Gobi Desert and Africa with the Sahara cannot be considered mainly inhabited. Space.com consulted astrobiologists, who all said that the more small continents, the better. They will not have parts far from the ocean, the planet will have a lot of currents, and the diversity of the living world will be in full swing. Look at isolated Australia with its unique spiders and kangaroos. The way the world works is that only the strongest ones survive, and the farther the life is among them, the more chances the weaker species will survive and evolve into something interesting. As we can see, man is such an ungrateful creature that instead of gratitude, he devoted hundreds of scientific articles to the imperfection of the Earth. In addition, he has invested billions in the search for a better planet. But so far, it's been a mixed success. In 2020, Dirk Schultz released a high-profile article with a striking headline that about 24 planets may be super habitable and have conditions better than Earth's. Unfortunately, upon more detailed analysis, it turned out that 23 of them do not meet the expected characteristics. Since then, we have not made much progress in searching for habitable planets. Most often, scientists use mathematics to calculate orbits, planetary masses, and hypothetical atmospheric compositions. But as we have said, life is fragile, and many things can go wrong. Therefore, the evidence of a super-Earth existence needs to be ironclad. At the moment, one of the main candidates is Kepler-442b. This planet fills almost all of the checklist of scientists that we've voiced. First, the planet is in the habitable zone of a K-class star. It is about 40% lighter than the Sun, but Kepler-442b is also closer. A year on the planet lasts only 112 days, although Kepler-442b does receive about 30% less heat from the star than we do. This is corrected by a second notable detail, size. Kepler-442b is 30% larger in radius and about twice as heavy as Earth. And hence, all the points about the dense atmosphere, shallow oceans, and plenty of room for life are fulfilled. Theoretically, the greenhouse effect of a thick atmosphere would eliminate the difference in the resulting heat, making Kepler-442b one of the most promising candidates for the presence of life. Although the planet is 1,206 light-years from Earth, theoretically, James Webb should have enough power to get a closer look at it. However, even if the telescope does find something remarkable, 
with the current advances in communications and spacecraft speeds, it's a long time before we can verify it. The only good news is that a K-type star will live much longer than Earth, and our descendants have a lot of time left. In addition, one of the candidates for the existence of life is the TRAPPIST-1 star system. There are four planets in its habitable zone, and one of them has attracted the attention of scientists. TRAPPIST-1e is a unique world, the physical characteristics of which are very similar to Earth. The mass, radius, gravity, density, and even temperature of the exoplanet are very similar to the Earth. The problem is that the star of this system is incredibly cold. Its mass is 10 times less than the Sun's, so the habitable zone is much closer to the star. A year on TRAPPIST-1e lasts only six days, and its proximity to the star puts the planet at risk of constant radiation bombardment. However, if by some miracle life would learn to survive there, it could survive for billions of years. Red dwarfs are insanely tenacious, and their lifespans are longer than we said before. To cross out TRAPPIST-1e from the list of potentially inhabited planets is not worth it, mainly because the world is only 40 light-years from Earth. Even James Webb's telescope in this system will frolic. After all, the naked truth is that our knowledge of life is incredibly scarce. We create bombs to wipe cities off the face of the Earth, but we can't even create the simplest single-celled life. This mystery is still unsolved. Therefore, any analysis of the planets a priori makes no sense. They are based only on our observations of the Earth. The space is infinite, and life there may exist in a form we can't even imagine. Will scientists of our generation find life in space? Leave your opinion in the comments. That's all for now. See you soon, friends.